Good morning and welcome to see us. Six nine six nine, and in person by simply filling out a prayer card and dropping it in the prayer box on the altar by minister seating. Please observe all handicap reserve seating for those in need of special care, and please no food or drink in the worship center. Bottled water only. Thank you so much. Please do not leave personal items or trash in seats. All unauthorized items left in the seats will be placed in the lost and found bin behind the welcome desk at the connect corner. Your cooperation is deeply appreciated. And remember, at the Connect Corner, monthly event calendars, church directories, sermon CDs can all be picked up there. You can register for home life groups and more. Plus, you can also receive our 24-ounce CFC Stadium Cups for a donation of just $2 at the Connect Corner. As well as CFC decal stickers for a donation of just $1. Please continue to share all sermon series and freedom worship videos on Facebook. Then comment, please share. Check us out online at cfcsandycross.com. For all new features, including online giving. Finally, the all-new CFC app is ready for download. Please pick up a copy of instruction for both Android and Apple at the Connect Corner on your way out today. Now, let's get ready to pray it in as we prepare for today's worship celebration. Let's make some noise for Jesus! Ah, oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Let us bless his holy name, hallelujah. We're so glad you came to be with us this morning. Are you excited about being in the house of the Lord? Ah, about being in the land of the living. Glory to God. We're so glad you came to be with us this morning. We hope you came with an expectation. Huh? Because I'm always expecting God to do something exciting anytime we come before his presence. Are you ready? Church, are you ready for a mighty move of God? Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Pray with me. Pray with me. Gracious and merciful Father, we just come right now. God, we ask right now, God, that a spirit of humility will be set in this atmosphere, God. And God, as we humble ourselves in your presence, God, we ask that you will move in this house, God. For we, your people, come with an expectation on this morning, God of a mighty move of God. God, we say, have your way, God. We yield our vessels unto you, God. Do it for your glory, God. We ask that you would anoint freedom fresh and anew this morning, God. Let the spirit of Judah arise, God, in this place, God. For we need not fight our battle, for the Lord shall fight our battle. God, we ask right now that you would anoint the man of God as he release your word in this place, God. With dudamus power, God, that lives will be changed, God. Help us not to remain the same in your presence, God. Take us from glory to glory, God. That your name will be glorified in the earth. For this is our prayer. In the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. And the church said, Stand again, he was 
That's an oldie buddy goodie. Yes. Are you glad to be here? I don't know about you, but I'm just a nobody. <laughs> Trying to tell everybody. All about somebody who saved my soul. Amen. Are we ready this morning? Somebody say, play it, Rob. chose me It's always been a mystery All my life I've been told I belong At the end of the line With all the other not quite And all the never get it right Well it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to see I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus When Moses had stage fright Brought a rock to a sword fight You picked 12 outsiders Nobody would have chosen And you changed the world Moral of the story Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that They start talking to me And who do you think you are I say I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. Take a step. So let me go down, down, down in history. As another blood bought faithful man. Do it again. So let me go down, down, down in history. Go down in history. As another blood bought faithful member of the family. You are my family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. Cause I'm just a nobody. Trying to tell everybody What about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to see I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Nobody but Jesus I don't 
don't want nobody to see anything but Jesus. Because all I long to see one day soon is my Jesus. And so because of that truth, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get ready. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, get ready, get ready, get ready.
Your king sits on a throne that's high above all other thrones. And he's faithful. When earthly kings are not, he always is and always has been. For the things we make king in our life, they let you down every single time. Because you might have put them before him. But he never lets you down. He's faithful. You say, how do you know that? I've seen the evidence. I've seen the evidence. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring In every season From where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness All over my life All over my life Promise. 
promises and fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak, fear may come, but fear will leave. To victory, you are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All over. Fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. See the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, are Jesus. See the cross, the empty grave. Yeah. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life. Fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. So I will not be the evidence is clear. So I will not be. Yes, it is. So I should I be the evidence? Say his name. Oh, why should I be Jesus Christ? Is he? Can I get a witness? Oh, I should have been. Oh, Jesus Christ in me. Oh, why? Oh, why should I be? Is he? Oh, why should I be 
Savior, Jesus Christ, he's here. Yes, he's in the room, but guess what? He's in our hearts. Uh, if there ever was a time uh, to not fear, now's the time. I said, if it ever was a time not to fear, church, now is the time. Uh, for our Redeemer draweth nigh to God Almighty. He's coming. He's coming. And they just sung, are you going to be ready? Huh? Come on here. 
See, when he shows up, it's going to be too late to get ready. We got to be ready. Come on, talk to me. The Bible declares to be watchful. For the Lord draweth nigh. My God. I tell all of us, why should we fear? See, if we get our house in order, <laughs> there's no need to fear. He came for that very purpose so we wouldn't have to fear anymore. For we are not strangers or aliens, but we are the people of God who love God with all our hearts. And he shall dress us in robes of righteousness. Hallelujah. Come on, ushers. Come on, ushers. Ah! Uh, why should we fear? Uh, let that song minister to your spirit. Uh, thank you, God. Truly, we're thankful to be here today. Pray to God that you've enjoyed worship, that you will let it minister to your heart, especially those in our audience that don't know Jesus. The day will be a good day Amen. to give your heart to Jesus. I said the day will be a good day. Uh, see, he can show up in this very service. Come on here. And be right in the clouds calling us up. Will you be ready? See, everybody in here ain't ready. See, we need to pray, church. Because our desire is that everyone will be ready. Uh, if you're fearful, I can honestly tell you by my personal experience, there's nothing to fear in Jesus. <laughs> I said there's nothing to fear in Jesus. But if you're on the outside, God Almighty, oh uh, he's waiting on you. Uh, he's standing at the door of your heart knocking. Will you open up and let him in, church? Uh, I'll tell boots. Thank you, God. Woo! So hard to move on. I tell boots. It's so hard to move on when he's in the room. Uh, why should we fear? Our Savior is here. Good God. Mm. Of course, you know, there's plenty of ways you can give if you cannot attend. You can give on our website at sandycross.com. You also can give on our Share Faith app. Our download instructions for Apple and Android are on our website and on our Facebook page. And if you would like, you can also give the old-fashioned way. You can mail in your donation at 7814 Highway NC. 58 Elm City, North Carolina, 27822. But again, we'd like to just thank you for your liberal giving during this time. Let every heart pray, please. Dear God, we just come right now, God. Because you're such an awesome God. <laughs> Lord, you're perfect in all your ways, God. And God, we're so thankful on this morning, God, that you're constantly reminding us, God, that we have nothing to fear, God. No matter who comes against us or what comes against us, God. For you are greater. And for that we tell you, thank you, God. Now, God, as we come to sow into your kingdom, God. God, we pray right now, God, that it would be a sweet smelling savor unto you, God. That you will receive this offering, God. God, that those that are lost, God, won't have to fear anymore, God. But they can run into your loving arms, God. For you're so patiently waiting, God. We thank you for this opportunity, God. That you've allowed us just to give into the kingdom, God. We ask right now, God, that you will go from nation to nation. Saving lost souls, God. For you're calling them for such a time as this, God. And help us to always be obedient, God. Not only in our giving, God, but also, God, in our witnessing, God. That we would take a stand for you, God.
to those that we know that are lost, God, that they will come to know you in a real and a true way, God. For this is our prayer. For it's in the matchless name of Jesus we do pray. And the church said, you may give at this time.
Come on, stretch your hands toward the man of God. Say, man of God, God. preach with the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on here. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you so much for that. Hallelujah. So good to have everybody this morning. God bless you and thank you for being here. I want to read something to you real quick, if I may. Uh, CSC family, thank you for all the support recently in the passing of my father, Al Sabella. The meal, the flowers, the prayers uh, are greatly appreciated. As tough as it is to lose someone, there is a great peace knowing that they are now with Jesus and no longer suffering. And that is from Trent and Melissa Howell, and we continue to pray for them. Amen. Are they in here this morning? There they are. I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses on, Brother Trent. Hallelujah. We're still praying for you. God's got you. God's got you. Hallelujah. And your father is eternally healed in Jesus' holy name. And he's in a better place than any of us are. Amen. Hallelujah. Never, uh, you know, I'm glad the church is able to go in a home and just shower people with love and shower our our, our CFC family uh, with food and stuff like that. Um, it's so important for them to have that. And so uh, a lot of people might think that's old-fashioned church, but I think that old-fashioned church stuff still works in that regard. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, when you got, they had family coming in from all over the place and to have uh, food there, plenty of food for everybody to eat, and they didn't have to cook was a a great blessing. And that's something that's been going on uh, for a long time in the church. And my Aunt Ruth, in the last year of her life, she said, you keep that going no matter what it takes. And amen. Yes, ma'am. We're doing it no matter what it takes. We want to make sure because that's when a church really shows up, man. That's why it's so important to have a church. Don't do this thing by yourself. God has given you a church. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Everybody that loves Jesus ought to be somewhere, come on, somewhere, serving being involved, amen, be there for the church. The church going to be there for you, amen? amen? All right. All visitors, please turn in your slips uh, to the Connect Corner after service day. We thank you so much for coming uh, and choosing this church today. We have a gift for you there. I want to thank you for sowing in our fifth Sunday missions offering last Sunday. This past Wednesday, I told you we were uh, $108 away from a nice round even number of 5000 Somebody got up and wrote a check for exactly $108 that night. But then other people kept writing checks. We've raised in one offering over $6,000 for mission. Get ready, get ready, get ready. That's how a church gives, amen? So thank you for your faithfulness. Billy Joe, no cakes had to be made, no donuts had to be sold. Come on, somebody. God's people are faithful, and the tithes didn't suffer not one bit, amen? People paid their tithes, and they gave. Hallelujah. And so with that, we will be announcing a new missions partner soon. God has laid that on my heart. I'm going to let Billy Joe and the board know about it, but I feel very confident, amen, that they are going to go with me on this because this is a longstanding reputation of prestige and integrity, and it will really help cover a whole other area uh, that we want to cover. So I'm so thankful and excited about that. All right, Discipleship Group meets today at 4 p.m. in the cafe. And what a treat you guys got today. Chris Hall is traveling out of town, so Pastor Tim Hall is going to be leading the discipleship today. So come on and be with him at 4 p.m. in the cafe. Is that correct, sir? All right. Home life groups meet this evening at 6 p.m. Register today. Angie's our leader, and she'll be in the lobby with you, and she can answer any questions you might have about a life group, and she'll get you directed to the group that uh, you need to be in that's closest to your house. And uh, we're thankful for that. And all she does for the life groups, and um, with that, I say, get invested, get plugged into a life group. When you get plugged into a life group, you're getting plugged into your church, and you're getting to know people more and more, so see Angie after service today for that. 
We will recognize our June. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. Have I got the old one? Yep, I do. We're going to recognize. Oh, excuse me. This is not graduates. This is servants of the month. It's time to do that again, but we're not going to do it today. We'll do it next week. So if you want to find out who the servants of the month are, you have to come next week. Uh, the Outpouring Summer Revival, June 27th through the 30th with Donnie Raybon and Michael Bacon. You don't want to miss that. And also, our 2021 VBS is set for August 4th through the 7th. We'll have more to announce about that. And now I'm going to be quiet because our youth leaders now want to honor our 2021 graduates. Are y'all ready? This is our youth leaders, Joy Meadows, Shannon Key, Jordan Thomas. Can we thank God for them? And they're going to get ready to honor our 2021 graduates. Amen. Yeah, I'll be over here. All right. You can go ahead and open the doors. Thank you all for being here today. Service has been awesome so far, but there's more to come. And we're going to um, honor our children today, our youth, and some of our, our graduates in high school. So we just would like to do that now. So as they come in, give them just a moment to get up front, okay? Thank you very much. So before we get started, I do want to say something this morning, how proud I am of each and every one of these young people. They have really went through a lot this past year, and they overcame with perseverance and the strength from the Lord and encouragement from their teachers and their parents, and I'm thankful for that. So I'm going to turn it over to Sister Shannon Key first. She's going to, this is our pre-K and kindergarten. Go ahead, Sister. Good morning, CFC. Good morning. So, we have all these beautiful faces. Bless her. <laughs> <laughs> that I wouldn't cry. <laughs> but um, these kids mean so much to me. Yes. Um, and I'm so proud of them. And like Sister Joy said, this past year has been a roller coaster for all of us. And you can only imagine going through in kindergarten, it, it was, yeah, it's been tough for them, but they have been overcomers, yes, and they amen. succeeded, and we are so proud of you guys. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to start with the pre-K. Sorry, I dropped the mic. Um, I'm going to start with the pre-K, and um, our first pre-K graduate who is going to kindergarten is Haven Bartholomew. Our next pre-K, who is also going to kindergarten, is Kinsley Lee. <laughs> and we have Hayden Byron, who is <laughs> We have Paisley Dilda, who is going to kindergarten. <laughs> Miss Lily Rogerson, who is going to kindergarten. And the rest of these guys are going to first grade, which is awesome. So we have Jace Joyner. We have Jackson Candia. Paisley Taylor. And Caden David. We also have um, Bo Coffee, 
um, which is going to first grade. He's not he able to be here. So we love you, Bo. Happy birthday. <laughs> so can we stand and give them another round of applause, please? Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. Good job, young people. We love you, and we're proud of you. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to turn it over to Sister Jordan Thomas. She's our Fusion Youth Leader. It's yours, Jordan. Well, I'm very proud of y'all. And going through this and learning something new, doing virtual is extremely difficult. And y'all succeeded with flying colors. I am blessed to be able to grow with y'all and lead y'all. It has been such a blessing and I'm accountable because of y'all. That's a big part of my accountability. <sighs> I just love y'all so much and I'm so grateful that I get to see y'all grow up and succeed and continue in your journey. I see Jesus in every single one of y'all all my youth kids, and I'm very proud of y'all. So, I would like to recognize Courtney Bigler from Northern, well, they're all Northern Ash, <laughs> oh, Northern Ash. <laughs> Abigail Daniels from Northern Ash. And Carlos Bigler from Northern Ash. We are very proud of y'all. All right, you got anything else to say, sister? That was beautiful. Isn't she awesome? She's so good with these young people. Thank you, Lord. You good? I just have one scripture I would like to read. I do have um, a couple others to recognize that weren't able to be here. And then I think we've got a young man that graduated also. Um, Jeremy, can you come on up here? We would like to recognize you. This is Mr. Jeremy Cherry from Southern Nash. Good job. Good job, buddy. Congratulations. And then we do have two others um, that weren't able to be here today, but we certainly want to recognize them. And I'm going to ask their mother, Jennifer, to come up here. I have something we'd like to give them. So you all can go ahead and put them up on the screen. Um, we have Caden Kurtz, and they both graduated from Southern Nash. There's Caden. And then we have Kyler Kurtz from Southern Nash. Congratulations to both of them. Bless you. Bless you. And then I just have one scripture I want to read, and then we're done. Um, Psalms 121, verse 8. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God bless you, kids. We love you. Come on, church. Don't go anywhere. I got something I want to say. Amen. When I was in your shoes at this time, uh, I got ready to go into adulthood, and I didn't make the right decisions for my life. And the world beat me down real bad for 10 years, for 10 solid years, for a decade of destruction in my life. Don't let that happen to you. I'm here to tell you, you're getting ready. You, you're, you've approached, you're coming out of one season, and you're going into another You've walked out of one door, and you're about to go into another one. Amen? This door that is before you, God has set it before you for your good. Amen? 
Walk in this door. Keep choosing Jesus. The, if you think the temptation and the attacks have been hard in high school, wait until you're out of high school and you're working and you're working with people and you're going to uh, a community college or college with other folks that don't love your Jesus and they don't care about your Jesus and they want to pull you where they are because they think they're free. But remember, you are the ones who are really free. Amen. Amen. Keep choosing Jesus. And when you choose him now, you won't be delayed. Hallelujah. I could have started doing this thing in my early 20s if I'd have just turned to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful for my testimony and what he brought me through. But you don't have to go there. I already went through it for you. You don't even have to waste your time. It, ain't, it, ain't, it, it is absolutely a waste of time. Choose him and go out there and make your dreams come true. God bless you. We love you. God bless you, Mama Jennifer. Amen. You may be seated. I'm glad we had some Southern Nash represented in the house. Love Northern. My wife is Northern Nash. I'm Southern Nash. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. You were Northern Nash. Okay. Oh, Stokes. Stokes, Southern Nash right here, brother. All right, all right. But you know what? If, if we were still in school, wouldn't probably none of us go to Southern Nash. But I, I'd be at Nash Central the way to keep changing everything. But we, I know we got some Nash Central students in here. And so next year when it comes to graduate, graduation, I want to see some Nash Central, some Southern Nash, Northern Nash, Southwest Edge. Come, come on, somebody. Some fight, some hunt. That's how much we're going to grow in the next year. We're going to have folks from all the high school. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you all so much. All right, at this time, we're going to dismiss our king's kids uh, for elementary grades. Middle and high school can stay in here with us. Can we thank the fries? Thank you, fries. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. How many is ready for the word? Have I still got time to preach? That was wonderfully done. It was very done. It was done very well and very efficient. Amen. Uh, so I thank Joy and all the leaders for that. Let's get into uh, the word this morning. I don't have a whole lot, but I got a little something, something for you. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Very short scripture this morning. Don't want to hold you long. I know we got life groups tonight. So I want everybody to get ready for that. Uh, we are in a series. Anybody know what it's called? Say it louder. Again, our goal for this series is to realize that the doorways of life are opportunities arrived to by choices that take us to doors that grant incredible breakthroughs. So by this, we long to walk in the open doors that God sets for us and avoid those he has closed, thereby reaching our full potential, fulfilling our kingdom assignment and our destiny. How many know that you are put on this earth for more? You are put on this earth for more. You have an assignment. How many know as a blood-bought, born-again Christian, you are a citizen of another place? Amen? You could get bogged down by being a North Carolina citizen. You could get bogged down by being an American citizen sometimes. But can I tell you, we are a citizen of a higher and greater place. Come on, somebody. There's no corruption. There's nothing but goodness, nothing but power, nothing but authority there in that place that God has prepared for us. And he has called us as born-again Christians to implement his kingdom here on earth. Amen? All right. So with that said, we're going to look at a whole nother angle here this morning that I'm going to talk about. Very familiar scripture and I want it to bless your heart. Now you got a choice. You could spend the next 25 or 30 minutes thinking about what you're going to eat for lunch. Or you can focus in on what God wants to speak to your heart and your life today. You got out of bed and you made the effort to come to church. You might as well get all you can get out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to believe right now the Holy Spirit is going to capture every heart, 
every mind and focus us all in on what the Bible says this morning. Anybody agree with that? Father, we praise you, we love you, we thank you, we honor you. God, we have enjoyed the service thus far, the praise, the worship, the honoring of the young people. But God, now is the main course. Now is the main reason we are here, not because I am behind the pulpit, but because you are on the throne. God, we love you, we need you, and we thank you in Jesus' holy everlasting name. And the church said amen three times. Then you gave God a big praise because he's worthy. Amen. Give me that first focus point. Well, it's the only focus point. We're just going to be on one thought pattern this morning. We're not going to shift. We're not going to change. We are going to gnaw on this chicken wing till we get all the spiritual meat off of it. Amen. Protected by a prepared door. Protected, not just by any door, but a prepared door. A door that's been fortified. A door that has been prepared for to withhold and withstand destruction on the other side of it. There's a lot of times in our life, spiritually speaking, that there's a lot of bad things that get really close to you. But if you've called on God, if you've believed in his name, if you've trusted in his power, then no matter how close that destruction gets to you, no matter how close the attack gets to your life or your family, it cannot touch you because you have a prepared door, amen, guarding you. Prepared by a, protected by a prepared door. Now, after the death of Joseph in Egypt, the nation of Israel would multiply and grow within Egypt. Then future pharaohs, who didn't know of the anointed Hebrew governor of Egypt, that was Joseph, he was second in line to a well-deceased and long-gone pharaoh by this time of the past. They began to become intimidated and intolerant towards the mighty young Jewish nation thriving within their land. Joseph was long gone and dead. The pharaoh, the pharaoh who favored him was long gone and dead. They had no knowledge of that history. It's important to know your history, right? So you'll know what happened, what not to do again, and what to do better. They did not know about that Pharaoh who favored the Jewish nation. They didn't know about that. They don't know about this Hebrew governor named Joseph who God anointed to help the nation of Egypt and the world survive through seven years of a famine. They were intimidated because they get, just kept growing. They were intimidated by them. They would enslave them brutally. They would enslave them brutally and for four centuries until God would raise up an adopted prince from amongst them who was also, like Joseph centuries before, a biological Hebrew named Moses. Moses was a Hebrew raised as an Egyptian. This prince named Moses would be called from a burning bush by God to urge the Hebrews to believe for their freedom and persistently plead for the current Pharaoh to let God's people go. Can I tell you, in a time of tyranny, in a time where a Pharaoh stands over a nation and says, we have everything here in this palace, in this government that you need, but you got to check with us before you do this. You got to check with us before you do that. Can I tell you, God is still saying, Pharaoh, let my people go. You better know it. You better know it. You better know it. Talking about protected by a prepared door. Now, just before the finale in a recent series of plagues that God unleashes, God instructs Moses to prepare his people. God unleashes plagues upon the nation of Egypt from bodies of water turning into blood to all kinds of things to uh, 
I saw it illustrated in a movie, and when I saw that in a movie, man, it gave me the creeps. There was one plague called a plague of frogs where frogs covered the entire ground. It covered people's homes. When they woke up in the morning, frogs were all over the bed. Frogs were all, you couldn't walk nowhere. There was frogs everywhere. Now, if I go out in the yard, Stacy, and I see a frog or two hopping over in the corner, that don't bother me. But if everything was covered, I couldn't see the ground for all the frogs, I, ooh, that would give me the willies. That's a dad word there. Jumping Jehoshaphat. <laughs> that would give me the creeps. And so they've endured all this stuff. And Pharaoh still won't let go of the stronghold that he has on the Jewish people. You see, there's a difference in Caesar and Pharaoh. The spirit of Caesar says, I'm going to run your country. Just pay me a tax. But you're not enslaved. When Israel was under Rome, they weren't beating their backs every day, making them work for free. They could have their own businesses, their own commerce. They just had to pay a tax to a dictator. But Pharaoh says, work for me. I'm not going to pay you nothing. I'm going to own everything you got, and you'll never have anything of your own because I'll own it. That's the difference between the spirit of Pharaoh. The spirit of Pharaoh is slavery. The spirit of, uh, of Caesar is dictatorship. And so he still, Pharaoh, will not let the people go. And then the final plague, the final plague is for all the firstborn children of Egypt to be struck by the angel of death. This was hard, but it's about to happen. And Moses doesn't want the people to get hit with this. Now, their camp, the slave camp in Egypt, was in an area called Goshen. The entire time these plagues, Pastor Tim, were going on in Egypt, they went on everywhere except Goshen. The only place that you could be free of the plague was where the slaves were. So the people in bondage were the people protected. The people ruled over and dictated over and own were protected. That's because it didn't matter what Pharaoh did to them. God had them. I can't help what might come against your life. I can't come help what might attack your life or what people have said about you. At the end of the day, I feel like preaching. At the end of the day, you better know your God has got you and he's got you covered. But God wants to do something extra special at the end. Yes, he's protected them through everything. But now they have something. They didn't have to do anything, Pastor Jerry, to be protected by all the other plagues. Just because they were in a protected place that God had set aside called Goshen, they were protected. Just because they were God's people. Amen? God will do things for you just because of who you are. But there comes a time when God says, now I need you to do something. I need you to play a part in this covering that I'm about to do. Amen? And in order for you to play a part, you're going to have to make a sacrifice. Good God Almighty. And so for this final play that will serve as the worst one out of all of them, God gives Moses instructions to give to the people. Are you ready to read this morning? Verse 21 says, then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, pick out. Somebody say, pick out. Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. Somebody say, the Passover lamb. What was the Passover lamb? The best you got. The spotless lamb. The lamb without blemish. If there was a lamb amongst the lambs you were going to keep, it would be that one. 
if there was a lamb in a lamb contest, that was the lamb that was going to win at the state fair. You're going to bring home the blue ribbon with that lamb. I say that my sister and brother-in-law, they raise up goats, and they take goats to the, uh, the agriculture shows. And I went to a couple of them, and at first I didn't really know, okay, what makes this goat better than that goat? And after I saw how they judged the goats, I was able to very quickly catch on. Oh, the goat has to look like this. He's got to have muscles up here in his legs, and he's got to have a pretty coat and all that. I started to see what that judge was seeing. And this is what God is saying. Bring me the champion sacrifice. Bring me the first place. Bring me the blue ribbon prize winner. Bring me the choice one. Give me your best. And he says in verse 22, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop. What was hyssop? It was a brush plant. It was a plant that you could literally sweep the ground with. Dip it in blood that is in the basin. When you sacrifice that lamb, pour the blood in a basin. Get that hyssop brush plant. Dip it into that blood and strike the lentil and the two doorposts. What was the lentil? The lentil was above the door. The doorposts were on each side. In other words, don't just apply it to one part of the door. Apply it all around the door with the blood that is in the basin. Amen? Make sure that the blood has been applied all around that door. Amen? I want you to be protected on this side, on that side, and above. Amen? Hallelujah. So God says, put it on all around the door. Then he says, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. That was their door. A door that they were always able to go in and out of freely. But God says, don't you go out that door until the morning. You get on the outside of it. You put blood on each side and blood on the top. And then you get in there and you shut that door and you stay there and don't you come out that door. You see, there they'll be able to walk through it later on, just not right now. You see, when I'm talking about doorways to destiny, God will present you with doors. You'll see doors. Your life will present you with doors. But they're not always necessarily doors that you are able to walk out of. You can walk out of it, but it's not for you right now. It's a door later on. I thought about this this morning. I was turning it on the television last night. And the daughter-in-law of, of President Trump, Laura Trump, she is from Wilmington, North Carolina. And I began to think of what they had been telling her. They told her that polls show that if she was to run for North Carolina Senate, she would win hands down. There's that much support and excitement for her. She's originally from Wilmington. She's married to one of the sons. And they've been on her about it. And her own family now has been on her about it. You should run. You should run. There's an available seat in the North Carolina Senate. A chance for her to make a, a whole lot of difference for our state and whatnot. But she said, I, I'm so honored that they're telling me I would win. And that my colleagues say, if you run, I won't run against you. I know you're going to win. There's no need for me to spend the money, blah, blah, blah. But she says, I will not run right now because I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And these are the vital years of their life, and they don't need to be without their mother. So she made the decision. She said, I'll walk through that door one day later on, but not now. You see, that could be a very tempting thing when somebody says, here's the door. You're going, you got this. You don't even hardly need to campaign. The whole state of North Carolina wants you. Her poll numbers are up 70-some percent. That They say she would win hands down no matter what. But she has to make the decision, wait a minute, to take that position would make me leave my main position as a mother. Amen? 
See, something can look so appealing to you, and the victory is there for you. But you've got to make a decision. Is it the right time? You see, God will open doors for you, but he expects us to have discernment. Amen? There are doors that could have opened for me and you earlier on. But if I'd have walked through them then, I wouldn't have been able to handle the weight of that place then. I had to get seasoned. I had to get trained. I had to go through some things that would show me. Good God, when you go through that, you won't blow it now. You know why? You've been through something similar to that before. And now you know what to do with it so you can hold on to it. Amen? You want to keep, look, there's some doors you will need to push through because you know what's on the other side is yours. But there's some doors that are before you, and you just got to look at it and say, Amen, I hear you, God, one day. See, God wants to encourage you for what's going to happen down the road. Amen? Amen? I'm here to tell you, everything I've ever walked in in my life big, God showed it to me years before. And I could have pushed I could have fought. I could have had a fit to get into it right then. But God said, just hold your horses. When my pastor told me I would be the next pastor of this church, he said, I'm sure you'd love for this to happen next week. It happened five years later. Amen? Five years later, walking around with a calling. Five years, five years walking around knowing what God was going to do. Amen? Five years. I couldn't handle it in year one. I had to wait five years. Good God, if I'd have gone right in the next week, it would have tore me all to pieces and I'd been long gone from here by now. Amen? We're not always ready for what we think we're ready for. There are times when you must be sure you're on the right side of the door. Don't go out too soon. There's something going on on the other side of your door. And we'll look at it, and the door is closed, and we think that God is rejecting us. Oh, if you're writing notes, you got to write this down. Just because God has a closed door in front of you right now don't mean he's rejecting you. He's really protecting you. You're not ready for it. Come on. You th- I, that door is closed for me. Why in the world can't I walk in it? Amen. If you, know, if you knew what was on the other side of that, you don't always know what's on the other side of the door. But God knows every time. Amen. He says, none of you shall go out of his door until morning. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. God says, I'm about to unleash something on this whole place. And I need you to be where I'm telling you to be so you don't get hit by unnecessary attacks. Sometimes we get hit with things that we're not supposed to get hit with. It wasn't a, uh, some trial we were supposed to go through. We just didn't prepare ourselves. We didn't put ourselves in the right place at the right time. Can I tell you, Christians need to be in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. We got too many missing Christians. We got too many missing Christian leaders. We got too many called people that says, I'm called to do this. I'm anointed to do this. I'm talented to do that. Well, where in the world are you? God's raising up an army and you're not where you should be. If you're not where you should be, you might get hit with some worldly things that were never intended for your life. You just weren't in the right place. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. God unleashes judgment on unrepentant unbelievers. I don't know about you, but when the rapture of the church takes place, I got to be just like Jesus where he was found being about my father's business amen I can't be burnt out I can't be fed up I can't have given up come on I can't be having a pity party I can't be angry I can't be hating on everybody come on somebody I don't want to get left behind well I don't think you will get left behind well I'll tell you what I'm not going to risk it I know 
what he did on that cross over 2,000 years ago was too precious for me to lose it over every little mistake. I got that. But come on, I have still got to direct my life and let my life be guided in such a way that it exemplifies Christ somehow. Amen? I'm not perfect, but my God, if you can't see Jesus on any part of my life, who in the world do I belong to? Am I talking right, Pastor Tim? Is this too hard for a Sunday? Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord's going to pass through and strike the Egyptians, right? So not every closed door is because of rejection. Sometimes it's because of protection. And it says, and when he sees the blood, somebody say the blood. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood. What kind of blood? Just any old blood? No. The blood of the choice, spotless, perfect lamb. They couldn't just go kill any lamb that they could stand to lose. They had to take the one that they hated to lose. That was uncomfortable for them to lose. Remember, Jesus hasn't died on a cross yet. But this would be a picture of the rapture. You see, because when he sweeps through in the rapture. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back. When he sees the blood. And then he says, on the lentil and on the two doorposts. When the death angel comes through and he sees the blood above and on each side, he is specifically saying, that's what he needs to see. Help me, Holy Ghost. If all you did was wait till the end of the day. All right, Moses, that crazy Moses is telling us we got to do this. All right, all right, all right. That's good enough. Get in this house. That was not enough. That crazy Moses and his brother Aaron is always talking for him. All right, we'll play along. Let's brush the blood. Brush the blood. All right. That won't enough. They had to brush it on both sides and above. They had to fully apply, not partially apply. When he sees the blood on the top and on both sides. Too many of us are walking around and our Christianity is only represented on one side of us. Too many of us are walking around and our Christianity is, we let everybody see this side, but we hide this side. Or we let them see both sides. But we've given our mind to the old life. And we're ruled over from above. Everything that used to hold us down, and we've not gotten any more free than we've ever been. Come on, somebody. I know that life can be hard, but that, come on. Christians cannot walk around playing with the devil 90% of the time doing whatever he wants you to do for your life to disease your mind, disease your body, rot your soul, make you just as bitter as an unbeliever who has never even heard about Jesus. You can't spend all your time pledging your allegiance to the old life, the old ways. It does not mean that there are not some strong things and some strongholds and some temptations out there that will pull a man down. A lonely man down. A rejected man down. A lonely woman down. A rejected woman down. But at the end of the day, is God greater in my life than that thing that's been pulling me down? Your flesh will say, I deserve this. This is for me. This part of my life's not covered the way it should be. I got to do what I got to do. My God, you're not applying the blood. Amen. You're not applying the blood. He said, I'm looking forward to be on top and on both sides. On top and on both sides. He says, if that happens, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. So if that weren't the case, if the blood's not on that door the way it's supposed to be, 
the blood's not fully applied, then the destroyer is going to destroy. Let me give you that first shouting point this morning. When God passes through, he's not looking for the partially applied, but the fully applied. Fully applied. It don't mean you'll be perfect. It don't mean that everybody is perfect Pollyann and Dudley Do-Right. I just come up with those names off the top of my head. But it does say, I have a decision before me right now. And I'm going to choose to not do this. I'm going to choose to not react this way because of who I am in Christ. He's counting on me to represent him. And then when you make the, des the decision to indulge in whatever that is, or do that, or think that, or say that, or react that way, or go there, whatever it is, that's when you've got to have enough love for God in you to say, God, I got away with that, and my spouse didn't see it. Church brothers and sisters didn't see it. My pastor don't know about it. But you saw it. When David was caught in adultery and the prophet came to him, when David repented, he said, God, I have sinned against you. First and foremost, he realized who he had sinned against. Just because you get away with it and he or she don't know about it doesn't mean you haven't broken somebody's heart. You've broken his because of what you told him and who you told him you'd be. Whether you're sitting in the seat or you're behind the pulpit. I have had times in my life where I've heard the Lord say, I want better for you than that. I'm counting on you, Daniel. I need better out of you than that. It's not what I've called you for. I'll have to, Brother Kenny, I'll have to just... Submit myself to him and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the honor of letting a nobody like me stand up here and represent you. I failed you, but you've never failed me. I've let you down, but you've never let me down. God, if you'll cover me, forgive me, I swear, I promise God. I will hold on to you. Help me, Jesus. Church, we got to get right in these days. We do. I want churches to grow, but I can't stand up here and give you a happy-go-lucky message like they're doing down the street and on TV. Good God, it's time to raise up an end times army. What more do we have to have taken away from us in this country to realize we have got to turn to God? How many more things have to be shoved in our face to say, you need to accept this. This is normal. And if you don't, you don't have no love. No, because I do have the love of God, I can stand up and say, that's wrong. The Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. And you shall observe this thing. I like how it says he will not allow the destroyer. Sister Gladys, he will not allow the destroyer. I see God with his mighty hand right now on America. Because here's the thing, I've told you this before. God chose Israel, but America chose God. We have a covenant too. And I see the mighty hand of God. And I hope you, I pray for you to get a, a vision of this where God is saying, uh uh, you will not destroy this country. You will not destroy this country with hate. You will not destroy this country with lawlessness. You will not destroy this country with unbiblical laws, with antichrist views. It will not happen. You will not destroy this country. I'm going to go ahead and go there. You will not destroy this country with socialism, Marxism, or communism. Amen? Come on, somebody. 
You say, that's getting political. Go read what those beliefs are about. Just go read what they're about. The man who started Marxism was a satanic worshiper. We have got, we throw those words around and we hear them so easily on our news. Go get the information and find out what these beliefs are about. Amen? I am about every color. You know why? That's what the kingdom looks like. So I challenge every pastor out there. If you pastor a black only church, you need to get some color in there. If you pastor a white only church, you need to get some color in there. You say, well, people are just comfortable around their own and blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. Uh uh. That veil got tore over 2,000 years ago, and it's time for the church to catch up. I'm for every color, but I have never and never will be for hate groups. I'll never be for a theory that teaches me to see race above everything and, and realize I need to apologize for what color I am and I need to always see that. No, 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 no. I see the beauty of God in everybody because God made us all that way. If anybody is still stuck in racism, no matter what color they are, I'm here to tell you, there is no way, according to that Bible, you're going to heaven. You ain't going to make it. I don't care how you were raised. I don't care what was sown into you. It's okay to think like this, and it's okay to say this. It's all right. Just, just don't let them hear you. No, no, no. The Holy Ghost heard you. He knows your heart. Come on. Who's welcome to sit down at your table in your house? Come on, somebody. Who's worthy of your time? God loves us all, and we were all made in His image. No matter what. No matter what. I don't know why I'm going here. Somebody needs to hear this. I remember as a little boy, two of our closest friends happened to be black people. They babysitted us, took us everywhere we needed to go, and I remember going to a ball game, and I found out, that there was some problems after I left. And I asked my mama, I said, what was those people's problems? They said they didn't like the fact of who we had with us because they were black. And I remember something rising up in me at a young age. Even though I won't live in, I was able to say, that is wrong. I have a grandson. It's biracial. He's part Hispanic, part white. When he was first born, we would go out into restaurants. And when folks would see him, they would always talk about his skin color. He's dark. But his skin's pretty. And would always point out his race. Always. And something rose up in me. It said, is that all you see? When you see that baby, then I feel sorry for you. And then I realized the weight and the pain of it. Because it won't just something that was happening to somebody else now. It was happening to me. Amen? And I'm here to tell you it's wrong. It's always been wrong. It's still wrong. When Jesus comes back, it's still going to be wrong. And if you want to debate me on it, I'm sorry. I will not waste my time with you on it. It's a, it's a season. God is getting the church ready. He's bringing the church together. I am here to tell every black person, white person, Hispanic person, Asian person out there, if you don't feel like you belong anywhere, come to Christian Fellowship Church. You belong here. And if you don't agree with it, you don't belong here. I 
said it, I said it, I said it. Come on, if you're ever going to have a kingdom-minded church, you've got to run the devil out. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on and let it, let it, let it just sink right in. Let it sink right in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I rebuke the weight that's coming at me right now. I push back all resistance. I thank you, Holy Ghost, for the boldness to preach the truth. And I thank you right now. Hallelujah. God, you're about to turn some things around in this country. The lies are going to shut. We're about to see just how many lies have been told. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. We're about to see just how many people have been snowed. But I'm here to tell you we can repent, come back together, and realize things ain't always what they seem. And we need a change. We need God back in the White House. We need God back in Washington. We need God back in this state. We need God back in this country. I'm on a roll this morning. We need the Supreme Court to do what they said they'd do. There is a case in front of them right now that can have some huge implications on Roe versus Wade. Every time I hear about it, I just get excited in my spirit. We finally got a chance to end the curse off of America. If you don't think there's a curse on this country because of all the innocent children that are slaughtered in the name of convenience, you better think again. Amen? Those folks were put there three in a row for that very reason. Come on, somebody. You better know God can use anybody. I don't care what they act like. God can use anybody. He used Nebuchadnezzar. He used Cyrus. He used Saul. He used an adulterer named David. Good God, he can use anybody to raise up people. And I'm here to tell you there were three people in a row put on that Supreme Court. And I believe it for such a time as this. And if we can get that curse off this country, good God, you're going to see some jubilee and some praise and some celebration. He won't allow it. If I put the blood on my house, not on just part of it, he's not going to allow it. He's not going to allow anything to happen to my son. He's not going to allow anything to happen to my wife. He's not going to allow anything to happen to this ministry that he's given us. If we put the blood everywhere he said, Verse 24, it says, and you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It'll come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you. Come on, somebody. What you don't have yet is coming. What you need to break through in your life, good God, I feel the prophetic spirit of the Holy Ghost. It's coming. You might not have it yet, good God, but it's coming. Look at your neighbor and say, it's coming, it's coming. It'll come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised that you shall keep this service. And they did. They called it Passover. Don't ever forget to reflect upon and commemorate, celebrate what he has spared us from. Don't ever get tired of telling your testimony. Don't ever get tired of recognizing where God brought you from. Amen what he has shielded us from, what he's protected us from. Thank you, God, for passing over me when I could have been destroyed. Thank you, God, for it passing over me when I could have OD'd. Good God, come on. There might be people in this room or online right now. If it wasn't for the hand of God on your life, you'd have been dead. That needle you stick in your arm, that pipe you put up to your mouth, you could have OD'd by now. That prescription medication that you can't get enough of, you might have been dead by now. Driving 95 miles an hour everywhere you go, you should have hit something by now. And all the times that I drove drunk before I got saved. I could have killed myself and somebody else. Thank you, God, for passing over. Thank you for letting that destruction pass over my life. And for that wayward son or daughter 
that we're praying for, amen, that has not come back to the Lord. We have got to keep praying, hallelujah, with the application of the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. They might not be where they need to be, but I can tell you what's not going to happen. The destroyer is not going to get them. It's going to pass over them. Until they get to where they need to be. They think this is all they think this lifestyle is all right. God opened their eyes. They think thinking this way is all right. You raised them in church for 18 years, then sent them away to a college, and a professor got in front of them and said, God ain't real. And you think for that two to four years, everything that you raised him up in was undone. The devil is a lie. Raise up a child in the way that they should go, and they shall not depart from it when they're older. Now, thank you, God, for it passing over my life, because I could have died back there. Amen. Because of the fully applied, perfect blood, destruction passed over them. Then later, because of that same fully applied blood, listen now, they'd be able to pass through an ocean on dry land while God held back the waves of destruction and would later drown what was trying to pull them back. Hey, when you got the blood on your door, not only... Will you be protected from what's trying to take you down right now? Good God, if you'll apply it to your life, if you'll apply it to your house, God will help you to cross over on impossible odds and those things that are trying to pull you back into bondage, God will drown them with it. Amen? Just choose Him. Choose Him. And that thing that's still trying to pull you back will drown. You need to lift your hands to heaven right now, whatever it is. Whatever's been trying to pull you back and say, drown it, God. Drown it, God. It's trying to overwhelm me, but I know if I choose you, you will overwhelm it. As I try to close this morning, anybody get anything out of this? I got a little bit more time. We also see from this that when it comes to our own doorways, that not only must we keep some shut, but also always apply the blood. It wasn't just about staying inside and shutting the door. It was making sure that their door was prepared. Amen? See, God don't want you just to avoid everything. God don't want you to just shut yourself up. Amen. And keep quarantining. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got to apply the blood. Amen. And God's bringing people back to church now. And things are opening back up and people are starting to come back. And now God says, are you ready to do this thing again? Are you ready to do it better than you've ever done it before? It's time to apply the blood. I know there's some translations that try to water down the gospel. Take away the blood. But can I tell you, good God, you've got to apply the blood. Jesus spilt his perfect blood for you and I. So when it comes to our own doorways, that not only must we keep them, some of them shut, we got to apply the blood. Meaning, you can't just shut doors and expect to keep harm from your house. You can't just shut doors or shut your mind off or shut your eyes and expect to keep harm off of your life. You got to apply the blood to your life and to your house. Amen. Anybody hearing this preacher this morning? Hallelujah.
You say, well, that's a good shouting message, Daniel. I like your style. Okay. You kept me awake. If you hadn't been shouting and hollering, I probably would have fell asleep by now. But here's the thing. The enemy is not scared when you just hear a good message or you come to church and the preacher sees you. He's scared when that word gets into you and you say, that's for me. If it ain't for nobody else on this road, it is for me. It is for my life. I can't just play church. I can't just wear the t-shirts and buy the, 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 the CDs and the downloads. I can't just have the fish bumper sticker on the back of my car. I've got to do a little bit more. It's time for me to apply the blood. It's time for me to apply the blood. It's time for me to quit ex applying my excuses and start applying the blood. Amen. I'm not trying to pastor a church full of perfect fuddy-duddies. The dad word again. No. I am trying to pastor a church of people that realize what they've been saved from and they are so grateful because they realize they get to sing a song that angels cannot sing because angels have never been redeemed from anything they've always been around the feet of God but see you and I could have chose the world but instead we chose him and those angels God loves them he sits there and he sees them he appreciates them but they can't sing the song that makes him get up off his throne and take notice. And when you can really, good God, when you can really sing the song of redemption, you'll make God stand up and say, hey, that's the real thing right there. He's getting it. He's finally getting it. It took him 20 years, and they're finally getting it. I don't know about y'all. Yeah, all right, let me give it to you in a way you can understand. When I first saw my oldest son score his first basket in basketball, I got up out of my seat and I jumped up in the air so high that when I came back down, I turned my ankle over. But you know what got me out of that seat? He got it. He got it. He would stand out and he would just shoot, shoot, shoot three-pointers, shoot three-pointers, shoot three-pointers. And he got it. Amen. That which he had applied himself to, he got it. Same with my youngest son. I didn't stay quiet. And I had a little bit of a problem with that kind of stuff. Was, Aren't you a preacher? You need to take it easy on these reps, preacher. They need to learn how to call a game. Then I had to say, I'm sorry and forgive me, Lord. If you are at a game and you've done something really great and your dad didn't stand up and cheer for you, And I've seen people before, their kids couldn't do what other kids did. But if they were just out there on the field trying, oh man, you would have thought they'd won the Super Bowl. Because they saw their child doing what they had raised them up to do. And that's try and do your best. Amen? And God just wants you to quit playing around. Apply the blood. 
realize what redemption really means and be so grateful to it that you say, God, I'm not going to dishonor you with the old life anymore. I made a mistake. I repent. I'm getting back on this track and we're going to keep rolling, God. But I choose you, Jesus. I choose you. And the things that used to mess you up and trip you up, all of a sudden you're not doing them anymore because you're just too focused on God. You're just too focused on the goodness of God. You're just too focused on everything that he has brought you out of so far. And when God starts to see that coming together in your life, he gets up off his throne and he says, yeah! Because he sees you being prepared. Everything we teach our children is to what? Prepare them. I spoke to those kids a while ago. Why? I want to prepare them. Give me this last shouting point. Number two. To avoid destruction, the only way to truly appreciate protection is doing what it takes to be prepared. If there's a plan of protection out there, I'm not showing I appreciate it if I don't even make any effort whatsoever to get prepared. Are you hearing me? To avoid destruction, the only way to truly cherish it and appreciate it is doing what it takes to be prepared. Destruction is coming in the form of a seven-year-long period called the Great Tribulation. But just like the Passover, we have the rapture. And the Lord will sweep through to rescue all who have applied His blood. Have you fully applied the blood this morning? Amen. Did you get anything out of this? Stand to your feet this morning. Give your God a praise for His Word. He's a good, good Father. Now, if you're saved this morning, give the Lord a hand clap. I'm going to ask every saved person in here to honor and respect this next few moments and pray. Pray for those that could not boldly put their hands together and clap. I want you to pray for them right now. As we settle things down, just give the Lord a chance right now without any interruption. Give them a chance. Is there anybody among us today that says, I'm not prepared for the rapture of the church. I'm not prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. I'm not prepared for death should I lose my life before the rapture takes place. I'm not prepared. I have not put the blood on my life, on my home. If that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed and every Christian praying for them, if that's you this morning and you're lost and undone, raise your hand in this place. Anybody, 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 okay? With every head still bowed. Nobody's raising their hand. So I want every blood-bought Christian that knows if the rapture was to take place in the next few moments. You're not perfect. You make mistakes. But you have asked Jesus into your heart. I want you to raise your hand. Now that normally tells the tale. Not everybody has the confidence to raise their hand. So if you're here right now and you can't raise your hand like them, you need to get out of your seat. You're uncertain. Do not play with uncertainty. Do not gamble with eternity over uncertainty. Run. Run. I want every person that's raising their hands right now to pray and pray loud. Say, help them, God. Help them, God, to surrender. Help them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Let them realize if they get out of this place where your convicting spirit is calling them, it may not be as easy. You can't get saved anytime you want to. You can only get saved when the Holy Spirit is pulling you. And he may not, you may not feel that pull like you feel it right now. Will you come? Will you come? Or will you continue to gamble 
with eternity. Is there anybody, anybody right now? Anybody right now? If you have a loved one that is lost and undone, backslidden, they've held their hand up in the air, and said, God, I don't need you no more. I don't need your people. I don't need your church. I want you to lift your hands up to heaven right now. You say, God, they don't want to apply the blood to our door, but I do. I feel right now led to tell you God is going to shield them from destruction because of your choice. And he's going to give them enough time that's called tarrying. He will tarry long enough for them to come back. So don't think that your prayers are useless. Don't think that the blood you've applied to your home is useless simply because everybody else don't want to get on board. God's going to honor it. God's going to honor it. Amen. So God, we pray that they'll realize this time of mercy and grace that you have bestowed upon them and they'll appreciate it enough to come back to you before it's too late. Hallelujah. For any sickness in this room right now, let them reach those same hands up to heaven. I believe for healing for your people. Can I tell you though, if you couldn't raise your hands while ago to say, God, save me, but you want to raise your hands to say, God, heal me. Come on, somebody. Don't use him as a problem solver. He's everything. God, I want you to make things better in my life. I want you to give me breakthroughs, but I refuse to surrender everything because I want to be me. And I got to do me. That's a big saying out there these days. I got to do me. I got to be me. No, we got to be Jesus. <laughs> That's what we're called to do. One last call. Anybody want to start the rest of their life today by saying yes to Jesus? If not, lift up your heads, open your eyes, and give God a praise because His Word has gone forth. Free and clear. Pastor Jerry, come on. We love you. Let the spirit of what God has taught in this place today go forth with you. Amen. And if you didn't have, if you didn't take the opportunity a while ago to give your heart to Jesus in an altar call, don't leave this campus today. Don't pull out of that parking lot without talking to me or Pastor Tim or any other leaders in here. We've had people get... Uh, give their heart to Jesus after our service was over. Just let somebody know it. Chuck got saved at the doorway walking out the door. He avoided the altar call and was getting ready to leave. Had his keys in his hand. Gave his heart to Jesus right there at the doorway. Not that doorway, the glass doorway that leads to the outside. Amen. No matter when you get on board, as long as you get on board. I love you. Enjoy your life groups tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. There's information out there about them. Join one. We love you. We'll be back Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for an awesome Bible study. Can we thank God for the greatest pastor in the world, Jerry Brazil? Praise the Lord. You know, I noticed as I walked out and looked at my garden yesterday, and I said, God, with just a few handful of seeds and your blessings upon this, look, look what has taken place. You know, you're sitting among a spiritual garden this morning. The plants that I have out, after a while, they'll die. And unless something else is sown, there'll be nothing I grow for no harvest. But thank God this morning, amen, that spiritual seed is still being sown here. Amen, and it must continue to do so to the coming of the Lord. Thank God this morning that he's walked among us, that we felt his presence, we felt his love. How awful it would be if we come to church and didn't feel nothing. But our spiritual eyes are seen this morning, and our spiritual ears have heard God's word and how rewarding that is. Father, thank you for loving us, for always being there, feeling our every need, God. 
when we didn't love you, you still loved us. We're so grateful you were willing to give the best heaven had to offer. And God, we're so thankful that you sent that old-time conviction power, God, that brought us down to a place that we cried out and said, Yes, Lord. So those that didn't come this morning, I pray, God, you'll continue to speak to them. For as we often said, we put our clothes on this morning, but honor take them, may take them off tonight. And the only thing going to matter in that hour, are we prepared to meet God? I ask you to go with each family, continue to bless each family, dear God. We love you, we honor, and we praise you. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.